guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekend reading vlog. I missed you guys. I took last weekend off so no reading vlog posting today but I am posting my October TBR and our 24 hour readathon announcement for later in the month. I'm so excited about that. Like I'm really excited because I haven't done a legit 24 hour readathon in the sense of like the only priority that I have in that 24 hours is to read as many books as possible and I'm gonna really try and push myself to stay up as late as possible. <laughs> I haven't done that since my first video ever on booktube. It's my first one. Don't go and search it. <laughs> I mean, you can't go and search it. It's just like so funny. It's like a little baby Zoe and it's just crazy. I was filming it on my iPhone at the time, fun fact. So there's tons of clips that are like taken the wrong way. <laughs> it was so fun. Anyway, I'm really, really excited for that. But no vlog today, a little sad, but I'm here back vlogging this weekend. I have got to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I don't know if I'm doing like anything fun. Like, do you know tonight we have the book club live show so that'll be really fun we're discussing the house with chicken legs which i just finished last night and have thoughts on so that'll be fun and then tomorrow we're actually going to my parents land to see my parents and my brothers and sister-in-laws and their kiddos to celebrate my dad's birthday my parents have like a little slice of land out in like the back row, it's kind of like the country-ish area. They purchased it, but they haven't built on it yet. But it's really, really beautiful. And Wisconsin right now is just stunning with all the leaves changing. So from there, I don't know what the plans are this weekend, honestly. I was going to rearrange my bookshelves. Basically, I've just decided that I want to really get to those bookshelves. They have not been organized since I moved. <laughs> But then I was thinking about it and I think I want to make actually like a separate video for that. I'm kind of a basket case but I've been feeling a lot of different emotions when it comes to like my booktube channel and my channel in general and I just don't know, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing anymore <laughs> basically. Maybe I'll talk about it later. I don't want to feel like I'm complaining. I just, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty tired. It's 8.45. I need to make some breakfast, I need to make some coffee, my day starts at 9.30. I have been doing my new job, which is going really well. This is the second week of training, so today officially marks two weeks, and it's been really, really great. It's been a huge learning curve, one that I, I wasn't fully expecting as far as how much I needed to learn. We do actually also need to pick a book to read this weekend I am feeling my October TBR so I'm thinking of either doing one by one by Ruth Ware or oh my gosh honestly I would do any of these or bunny or maybe rules of magic because I've been really wanting to reread this so I honestly don't know I might consult Instagram or I also might see what's on script because I definitely want to like also chill out I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing again you guys, I love Animal Crossing. Okay, anyway, I need to go. I need to make my breakfast, get some coffee in, start my work day, and I will check in with you guys a little bit later. So it's much later in the day. It is 6.40 p.m. This is probably the worst vlogging day I have had yet in these weekend vlogs. It's been a day. I'm a bit in a mood, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I like wasn't happy with my morning clip this morning. I hate this lighting right here, whatever's going on right here. I'm like feeling some type of way about my videos and my channel. And I really thought about not even doing this vlog and just not doing anything this weekend. But for whatever reason, I'm still here. And I want to vlog. I just also want things to go my way <laughs> which sounds so vague and just I yeah I'm just I'm just in a little bit in a mood so work and training at work has been so hard and so difficult in a really really good way like it just a very new challenging way I'm not discouraged and I'm not like upset that I changed my job at all but it's hard I am now in 
healthcare. So I work for a startup company that is in the healthcare world and I don't know anything about healthcare and I did not realize it was like learning a second language. There are so many acronyms for things and there's so much jargon and there's so many like exceptions to the rule and it's just really overwhelming. My brain feels totally fried. I feel like I can barely string sentences together. <sighs> let alone focus on anything else in my life. Like it just really feels all consuming. And so I think I'm just, as far as vlogging goes, like this feels really hard <laughs> right now. Maybe I'll talk about it a little later, but I've just been like really discouraged with my YouTube channel lately. And I think it's just like what happens as a creator in anything that you do. You just have seasons where you're like, why am I still doing this? And do I really want to do it? Do I really want to put the time and the effort forth? And it's kind of where I'm at. Anyway, I have our live show in an hour and 15 minutes. So I need to like make some dinner, eat, relax. I haven't touched a book. <laughs> I haven't like chilled out all day. I went right from work to Target because I don't have any time tomorrow morning to go to Target before we leave for my dad's birthday. So I needed to hustle over there, get some stuff, come back here. Now I need to make some dinner and get ready for this live show. Honestly, I can't wait for the live show to be done. I love, love doing the live shows, but Friday nights are like my relaxed time, like Friday nights and Sundays. <laughs> I just never want to do anything. As much as I'm looking forward to the live show, part of me just like wants it to be over so I can officially feel like I can start the weekend. I did get some fun things at Target, so I thought I would show you guys what I got. I'll just show you guys the fun things, but the first fun thing that I got was this really cool, what is this called, macrame? No, it's not macrame. Oh, it is macrame. It's a macrame wall hanging thing. And I thought it would look really cute over in the living room by the lamp. So I'll probably hang that up later. I really like it. It's like so chunky and cozy. And I knew I wanted something macrame over on that wall. So I'm very excited to hang it up later. I also found this super cute mug. It says homebody. It's so cute. I love it. And I didn't get something white. All of my mugs are like white or clear, but one of my favorite mugs, it was this like mug with these gold flecks on it. I got it last year and it's honestly one of my favorite mugs. It broke the other day. I was so sad. I literally made a cup of coffee in it and I realized that there was this huge crack like on the inside and the coffee was like dripping out of the bottom and I was so sad, but I was like, it was your time to go. Now I guess I need to get a new mug. <laughs> so I did. I also got a reading lamp. I had one of these and then I lost it and I never replaced it for like a year and a half. And there's so many nights when Andrew, well, every night Andrew goes to bed before I do. And I would like to go to bed as well with him, but I always want to read and he can't fall asleep with our lamp on. So I got a little light so I could go to bed at the same time, but I can still read. I'm so excited about that. I also got this beautiful candle. It's called Autumn Bliss and it smells so good. I almost went with like a vanilla pumpkin, but I've already gotten like two other of those candles. And this one just smells divine and it's a really pretty like yellow color. I can't stop smelling it. I also got my favorite dry shampoo. Highly recommend if you guys do not use this Clean Freak Not Your Mother's dry shampoo. It's the bomb. I have used multiple and I always go back to that one. I also got some new nails. So I love this brand of fake nails. It's the Clutch Nails. I They sell them at Target. First of all, these are so cute. I'm actually wearing some right now. I don't, I don't have like the cutest hands, but they last forever. I have never used a fake nail that has lasted this long. I've gotten actual manicures that have not lasted this long. So I highly recommend these. They're amazing. These ones are like the actual length of my nails. I filed them down a little bit, but they were like shorter, which I love. And they're so cute. I can't even tell that they're like on. I'm absolutely obsessed with these fake nails. I cannot recommend them enough. I'm so glad I found them. And then I got a refill. I, this is the BB cream that I use in case you care. I'm not like a makeup expert, but this is the BB cream, it's the NYX Nude BB cream and I mix it with a little bit of my Tarte foundation as well as a little bit of like 
hydrating serum and that's what I use for my like foundation. And then last but not least, the last fun thing I got is my favorite lip gloss. This is the Neutrogena Lip Smoothie and it is amazing. I know I'm saying that all of these products are amazing. I've been using this stuff since high school. Like that's how much I love it. I actually bought in the checkout line a couple weeks ago those like little soft lips chapsticks and they dry. I've been using one all day and it has dried out my lips. Like I can't even tell you. This does not do that and it's like a gloss too which is awesome. So I cannot recommend this enough. It also looks really really good over like any lipstick. It looks pink but it goes on clear. It's amazing. I love it so much. Also, I have to tell you guys that I fell prey. I feel so dumb, <laughs> but I fell for an Instagram ad, like a clothing Instagram ad. I don't know if any of you have seen on your Instagram ads, like ads for these really cute Halloween type, like shirts and sweatshirts. And they're just like, so cute. All of the girls, I should have known better because all of the models, they don't show like their heads and they're just this like really thin body with this really like oversized sweatshirt slash shirt. I really should have known better. But they kept coming up on my Instagram and I was like, these are so cute and I really want something oversized like that. Like that's exactly what I want and I can never find oversized stuff for the fall. <sighs> And so I fell prey to it and I ordered a shirt. I thought it was so cute. But of course, of course, the model in the picture was wearing not her actual size and she was wearing probably a 2X, which is what I ordered, thinking it was going to be as oversized as it is on the model. And it's definitely not. And I'm like so sad and I'm so frustrated by that. If you're gonna model clothes, then wear your size. <laughs> so anyway, the shirt is terrible. It's the cheapest material ever. I couldn't even tell you what shop it's from because like I said, it's one of those like stupid shops that are not big name brands. Anyway, it's so dumb, but I really thought it was going to be cute. It's like the peanuts. It's like Charlie Brown and Snoopy. And in the picture, it looked all like cool and faded. And it looked like it was this really comfortable, like oversized t-shirt. No, 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 this is, this will fit me snugly. Like this is gonna be tight, it's a 2X and not oversized at all. The sleeves are not nearly as oversized as they were on the model. And the print of the peanuts looks terrible. <laughs> Don't do this, you guys. I was tricked, but it looks so bad. It's like, they're all like white. Like it's a terrible, terrible shirt. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. <laughs> oh, I also got two other things that I wanted to show you guys, but I think I'll wait until tomorrow because this was plenty for now. I am going to go make some dinner, get ready for the live show. And then when I'm done with the live show, I'm going to pick out a book to read and start reading. And I will check in with you guys later tonight when I have picked a book and read something. Hopefully that will actually happen. Hi. You guys are so cute. <laughs> Hello, it is currently like 10 o'clock. It's 10 10 to be exact. And just got done hanging out with Kaylin and Liv for a little bit. We had our live show, it went really well. And then we usually hang out afterwards for a little bit just to like catch up and talk. And it was really fun. I'm just super grateful for friendships and especially for those two. I never thought I would make friends with people <laughs> over the internet like lifelong friends that I just share my life with and they're amazing. Highly recommend. Online friends is where it's at. <laughs> um, also, side note, I tried on the shirt before I started the live show and it definitely does not fit me loosely at all. It fits me snug, but it doesn't look that bad. Also, I didn't have time to change into anything else, so this is what I'm working with. <laughs> Haven't picked a book yet to read. This weekend is starting off so great. I think because it's so late at this point and I haven't started a book that I really need to find one on Scribd or Audible. I do have a couple edits. Edits. I do have a couple credits <laughs> left over um, from a purchase way back when. So maybe I would get one on Audible, but 
I don't know, I'm thinking of the Ruth Ware one, but I kind of want to see if any of my books on my October TBR that I want to read right now are on script. So that's what I'm going to look up first. I would be super impressed if One by One was on here because it's new. Is that really it? It's actually on here? Oh, okay. So we, wow, we're doing this. Dang, Scribd, I like you. Okay, so I'm gonna read One by One by Ruth Ware this weekend. I'm here for that, I'm down with it, I'm ready. I just cannot, I'm shocked right now. Like, Scribd is awesome, but typically the books that I really wanna read are not on there, or like I used up whatever is in my, however they do the weird algorithm thing in the membership. I'm gonna start that. I think I'm going to make some tea. I think I'm going to possibly color while I listen. That sounds cozy. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a great rest of my night. I wanted to escape for a while Thought that a couple of drinks could ease my mind I've been thinking of you for two weeks straight I know that I need to get myself back in the game Someone said your name had a ton of room Suddenly you're there sending me the crowd Everything comes back in the blink of an eye It's like you're mine, you're still Good morning, happy Saturday. It is Saturday. I'm currently in a Lowe's parking lot <laughs> because I needed to get my dad's birthday present, which was a leaf blower. I hope he likes it. <laughs> my mom said that's what he wanted, so that's what we got him. I think I just need to get some fresh air. I'm still in a little bit of a mood. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I made a latte, threw it in this guy. I'm ready for a little solo road trip. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a good day. Andrew has a gig tonight, so he had to stay home and practice. So that's why I'm by myself. And I think I'm just gonna listen to more of the book and head over that way. I'm excited because I think I'm gonna get to take some pictures out there, which I'm really excited for. I just think it's gonna be really, really pretty. And maybe get some like really pretty B-roll and stuff. So yeah, it should be a good time. I feel like all my makeup is sweated off do you ever feel like that when you wear the mask and then like all of this just like I feel like I just sweat off all my makeup? So I did start the book last night. I actually ended up reading the first couple chapters. I read the first chapter because it was like laid out so interestingly and then I ended up just continuing to read because it was so good. Basically this book is about a team of people from a startup. I think it's like six or seven people. They're from the startup company and they're going on this like company retreat together seemingly i don't know in the french alps and so they're in this like really remote snowy area but it's like this beautiful cabin so because they're a startup company they built this app and basically the app it's called snoop and what it is it's actually kind of interesting it is this app where you can in real time know what like people are listening to on Spotify. So like if Beyonce was listening to a song by Harry Styles right now, you could log into the app and also listen with her. So it's like this connection of like, she's listening to this song and I think she's so cool and so we're gonna listen to the song together. It's kind of like a virtual way of like sharing an earbud with someone. So like the app is actually really interesting. So they created this app and the first chapter is each of their like bios on this Snoop page and it's so 
funny because startups are so unique in the sense that a lot of apps nowadays are like created by a lot younger people and they do have like this like funny kind of just startup type culture and so she's really playing into that and I kind of appreciate it because I I work at a startup and I worked at a startup for the last four years and so I kind of like get it and I'm kind of just loving it. Yeah, I like it so far. I have to say it's very reminiscent of her book In a Dark Dark Wood which was not my favorite so I'm hoping that this one is much better <laughs> but so far so good i do like it i'm really intrigued to see what will happen with all of the different people and like what's going on behind the scenes what is the drama what does ruth Ware have in store for us i don't know but i'm really excited to find out <laughs> okay so i'm gonna head out i'm gonna go to my parents land hopefully get some pretty shots and some leaves because it's so pretty here right now. I'm actually very excited for this drive because it's just stunning right now in Wisconsin. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drink some coffee, and I'm gonna listen to my audiobook, and it's gonna be a great day. Hello, it is 7.30. I am super tired. I just got back from hanging out with the fam. We ended up going from the land to my parents' house to do like presents and cake and hang out some more and stuff. And then I ended up not even getting on the road until like 4.30. And then I stopped at the TJ Maxx on the way out. It's so weird that my hometown has a TJ Maxx because growing up, my hometown it's a relatively small like town it's not the smallest but it's it's fairly small and we never had any cool stores like the cool store was a walmart so the fact that there's a tj maxx and a kohl's <laughs> in my hometown now is very exciting anyway so i had never been in the tj maxx yet and i was just like ah oh, i'll just stop in and of course i got some stuff i really I'm sad because it's either I missed out on all of the cool autumn decor or I'm just really picky when it comes to like the stuff that I like as far as autumnal home decor. I don't like a bunch of like spooky stuff. There's nothing like wrong with that aesthetic and it's definitely like really fun and I always like go to people's homes and I'm like oh this is so cute but for some reason I just am like so picky. I just I want like pumpkin-y things, but not all pumpkin things. <laughs> I'm so weird. I don't know. Anyway, I went in there with the intentions of finding something like autumn, Halloween-y, October-ish, but didn't really find anything. I did find one thing, and it's really not anything special, so... I thought I would show you guys. Side note, before we get into this, I had a really good time with my family. It was a really fun time. The land was beautiful. It was so funny. I put a clip in the B-roll. I don't know if you saw it, but we were in the little wooded area on my parents' land. And we all turn around because we hear this mooing. And these cows <laughs> are just strolling through the woods, the middle of the woods. Like they totally got off of whatever farm they came from and ended up just like coming down into the woods. And it was so funny, like that does not happen. <laughs> and I was 
was like, this is such a Wisconsin thing. <laughs> I love it. It was really, really funny. So we had a really good time. Got a couple of fun pictures with the kiddos and just like caught up with my sister and my brothers and my sister-in-laws. And there's just like... Yeah, it was good. I love my family, my mom, my dad. Um, had some really good conversations with my mom. She's like wonderful and just gets me. Like she just gets me and accepts me and I just don't know what I would do without her. So I love you, mom. I know you're watching this. <laughs> I'll show you the only Halloween thing that I got from TJ Maxx. <laughs> and this like barely counts cause it's not even like orange or anything, but it's these kitchen towels and what makes them Autumnal is the fact that they have little pumpkins. <laughs> they're blue, but they're like so cute. And we really desperately needed some new kitchen towels. We've been using like some of the same kitchen towels since we got married. And that's fine if you wash them and we do, but they're just kind of getting like grody, I feel like even after washing them. So got some new ones. These are so cute. The other ones are just like a plain kind of off white. But I really like these and I'm excited to put them up. And then I actually got another candle. This one is called Frosted Leaves and it smells so good. It's really pretty too. It's like a very pretty container. Oh, I'm so glad I got that one. It's very kind of wintry, but just fall. Like it just kind of like a crisp fall day. I really, really like it. I burned through like all of my candles that I had. And I realized one day I was like, I don't have any candles except for my like tall tower candles. I don't have any scented ones or anything. So I'm kind of trying to build my collection back up. And this was only 10 bucks. So, and it's a really, it's a pretty big candle. It looks a little small on camera, but it's, it's a pretty big guy. It's 11 ounces. So I am excited about this one. And then this is super boring, but I just got some more hand wash for our bathroom. It's really cute though, and it smells really good. So there's that. I also got some more of my favorite brand of makeup cleaning wipes. It's the Simple brand. I love all of their stuff. It really helps my skin, or at least it helps my skin from not breaking out more. I have pretty sensitive skin. I actually got these last time too, but they were the exfoliating kind and I think it's too harsh on my skin so I really haven't been liking those and they also like kind of like fall apart when I'm using them so I get like all these white like things from the wipe on my face it's really weird so anyway these ones are the like hydrating ones and they're really soft apparently so super excited about these because a two pack for six bucks that's a steal in my opinion and then the next two things that I got I love so much. They are just little planters. They're ceramic. This one is kind of tiny, but it's really, really cute. And then this is a little bit of a bigger guy, but I really, really like him as well. And I actually needed these because I was so kindly sent some plants a couple weeks ago and I didn't get to vlog last weekend, but I needed to unbox them. So I actually recorded a clip of myself unboxing these plants and telling you guys all about them. They are so cool and I love them so much. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and roll the clip right now of me unboxing them to show you guys what I got. Hi guys. Okay, so it is Tuesday. It's not a weekend and I'm not technically vlogging, but I just got a really exciting package in the mail and I kind of wanted to do an unboxing to show you guys, but I can't leave what's in the box alone until the next weekend that I'm vlogging. <laughs> and the reason is because I was reached out to by Abby, who owns a plant company called Perico Plant Company. They are based out of Pittsburgh, and she asked if she could send me some plants for my mantle, which was so incredibly nice and kind. And I just am like, I can't stop smiling ever since this got delivered to my door today. So I wanted to show you guys what she sent me. I'm gonna link her plant company down below. She was also so kind in creating a code for you guys. If you'd like to purchase plants, they can get sent right to your door. And like, they are beautiful. There's tons of ones for like beginners. So, so awesome. I'll link the website down below. The code is Zoe, Z-O-E, for 10% off. And now let's just go ahead and open this little box. Look at how cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm really excited to see what she sent. I have no idea what's in here. 
but I think it's gonna be good. Aw, uh, she sent a little note. Hi Zoe, thanks again for letting me send you a few surprise plants to add to your mantle. Included is a heart leaf philodendron, ZZ plant, sand something something snake plant braid. I think that's what that says. I hope these plants start to fill up your home and you become a plant lady like the rest of us. Please let your viewers know they can use Zoe at checkout for 10% off their order. She ships across the U.S. and is a small woman-owned business. So go buy some plants from Abby and Perico. This is so exciting. Okay. Oh my gosh. And there's like a ton of paper and stuff in here. It was shipped with like fragile signs. So they knew to keep it like one side up. This is so cute. I'm so excited. Oh my word. <gasps> So this must be like the braided snake plant. She said, also super easy, water every other week. Okay, oh my gosh, do they really grow like this? Do I take this off? I don't know, I guess I'll have to ask her, but oh my gosh, how cool is this? I have never seen a plant like this before. It's so pretty. <gasps> I'm so excited, it's so cool. Oh my word, this doesn't even look real. Oh my goodness, look at how pretty. I love this. I wonder if this, this must be new growth, like the green, the really bright green stuff coming up. Oh my word, this is so pretty. It looks fake. I wonder what this one is. I think this one must be the ZZ plant because she said the heart leaf philodendron is the biggest pot and this one is the same size as the snake plant. So she said ZZ plant, super easy, water every other week. So similar to the snake plant. Oh my word. I am obsessed. <laughs> this next one must be the philodendron, which I don't think I own a philodendron at all. Oh my gosh, this one is so pretty too. Oh my word. This is like, these are the prettiest plants I have ever seen. I normally buy my plants from like Home Depot or like there's a local plant store um, that I sometimes go to as well. But these are like the best conditioned plants I have ever seen. I'm not even kidding. Oh my word. So this one she said, Hartley philodendron in the biggest pot will start vining water weekly. Okay, so good to know. Oh my gosh ha ah, thank you so much abby this is so cool uh i like i'm speechless these are so pretty i am in love i have to give all of them names and put them on my mantle i'm so excited to do so and see how they start growing <sighs> Thank you so much. I'm so happy. <laughs> Once again, if you want to support Abby and her little plant company, she owns it. Woman owned, small business. Go use my code Zoe, Z-O-E, for 10% off at her store. Go support her, you guys. This is so sweet. I just, I'm speechless. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled content. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? I love them so much. I still love them. They're all hanging out on my mantle. They have been doing great. They are still so healthy. I can't get over just the health of these plants. They are by far the healthiest I have ever gotten. And these are some planters. I need another one for the other smaller one, but they didn't have another small one that was kind of like this style. So I'll keep an eye out, but I'm really excited to put those guys in these. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Okay, I feel like this segment is probably a little long after that clip of unboxing the plants. So I do have thoughts about one by one. I've been listening to the audiobook on my drive there and then I listened to it on the way back as well. I have some thoughts, but I'm really hungry. <laughs> So I'm gonna go make some dinner. I'm gonna relax a little bit because it's been a pretty busy day, chill out, maybe listen a little bit more to the book, and I will check in with you guys later tonight before I go to bed with more of my thoughts on One by One. Good morning, hello, hi, I know, I'm so sorry. I think in every vlog on Saturday night, I always say 
that I'm gonna check in with you guys and then I never do. <laughs> it is Sunday. I stayed up way too late last night. I was reading and then I also started the show The Haunting of Hill House. My friends Kaylin and Liv have been telling me to start that show for like months now <laughs> and I was like sure I'll watch it and it's pretty scary. Like I don't know if you guys are like this but I don't get afraid of like serial killer stories or like true crime stuff. I don't know, like slasher films. That stuff doesn't really keep me up at night, but the stuff that genuinely scares me the most is like ghosty, paranormal, things going bump in the night, creepy faces hanging out at the side of your bed. <laughs> Like, that stuff scares me so much. It scares me so much. Like, the scariest movies ever to me are, like, Insidious, The Conjuring, just stuff like that freaks me out. It seriously, like, messes with my brain. And so I was thinking The Haunting of Hill House was going to be, and it seems like it still is, like, very dramatic and, like, this familial kind of, like, emotional story. And I think it is going to be that way. But it definitely has some creepy elements, and even a little bit of that will just totally mess with me so I was like going to bed last night and I was kind of like getting this creepy feeling of someone watching me and I just can't oh my gosh but of course it's also like this like adrenaline thing of like ah I want more so I totally have the third episode queued up because I want to watch one this morning <laughs> So that's what I'm gonna do this morning, but I do want to talk about the book because I said I would and I do have some thoughts I'm checking to see how far along I am in the audiobook. I feel like I made a pretty good dent yesterday. Okay, I have eight hours left today, and I'm listening on two times speed, so about four hours of my day today will be spent listening to this book, which I'm excited for. You guys should let me know if you're this way too, but I like my Sundays to be like the perfect mix of lazy and productive. So during my lazy times, I'm definitely going to be listening to this book. During my productive times, I'm probably going to be watching this show <laughs> while doing productive things. All that to say, I have been reading this and I like it. I don't, I don't feel like I really feel one way or another about it so far. I'm definitely invested in the story. I'm definitely intrigued. I'm tracking with all of the characters, which I think is really impressive because there are actually a lot of characters to keep up with. And I was nervous because I feel like there's like eight or so people that you kind of like have to get familiar with their names and their personalities. It was a little difficult in the beginning, but I think Ruth Ware does a really good job of like, she continually kind of reminds you of the different people and their traits. And so I feel like I'm hanging in there. I love the atmosphere. I love that they're like, in this just like beautiful chalet like ski resort and they actually have two people that are helping them in this ski resort so there's like the chef who is cooking all of the food giving them their meals and then there's also like the lady who is like their head what's the appropriate term she like does the cleaning but she also is like the person who helps organize them and their schedules and answers any questions for them. It reminds me of <laughs> Below Deck, if you guys have seen that reality show on Bravo. Like the head chef, I cannot remember his name. I think his name is Ben. The chef in this book reminds me so much of Ben. And then the main woman kind of reminds me of Kate a little bit, which is like hilarious, like the stewardess from that show. Anyway, if you don't watch that show, you probably like, I probably sound crazy, but those two characters are also really important to the story. We're actually getting the story from two people's perspective. One is that main, it's not a stewardess. I don't know what to call her. Her name is Erin, the lady who is like overseeing and like cleaning and, and helping them. So her name is Erin. And then the other person we're following, her name is Liz. And she's part of this team of people from the startup company that are at this resort. Liz is important to the story because she really doesn't fit in with the rest of the team that's on this trip. So we find out early on why they're on the trip. It is pretty mysterious though, like why Liz is there because she just really does not fit in. She's really 
mousy and shy and has so much anxiety. She like knows she doesn't belong. She knows that they know that she doesn't belong. It did get a little annoying to me like how self-deprecating she was and just how anxiety ridden she was. I'm still waiting for something to happen that will tell me why she's like terrified to say anything wrong in this situation. Like she's literally just scared out of her wits to make the wrong move. And I understand feeling like shy and intimidated by your colleagues, but it's like a whole different level with her. And so I'm wondering if there's like more to that. I really hope there is because I just feel like it's a little unrealistic how she's acting. And so I, there's got to be a reason why she's being so afraid for whatever reason. And then, yeah, the rest of the group is just kind of like this cliche startup group. Like these young people who are really wealthy because of the success of their company and very like privileged people, very annoying, like obnoxious. I call the shots and I can intimidate you into telling me what I want to hear kind of thing. I will say one thing I am like majorly disappointed in and it's really small, but for whatever reason, I picked it up really quickly. There is one character in the group of the team from the startup. His name is Carl and he is like the lawyer of the company. And Carl is really pointed out and like portrayed to be this really like frumpy, dumb, obnoxious guy. And he's also the only plus size character. And I'm just really annoyed that he is this like cliche of a like a bigger man. He's like constantly like tripping over himself. For example, they were going skiing and he's the only one of course that's like tripping and fumbling and falling and doing all of this like embarrassing stuff. And then he's also like constantly putting his foot in his mouth. He's just this like really kind of obnoxious guy. And I just don't appreciate the fact that he's like the only plus size. And I feel like it's just like this weird cliche that's really unnecessary. I don't know how to explain it. Everyone else on the team is like this like thin, attractive, cool hair, yoga, model, nose ring, cool people. The other men are like GQ models is the way that she describes them. But then you have this one guy, why did he need to be plus size? Or why couldn't have one of like the really cool people also been plus size? I think it's just like so annoying to me when there's these really cliche characters that's super unnecessary. It has nothing to do with his personality, but his like size is mentioned all the time. I'm really disappointed in that. It's not obviously a make or break when it comes to the story. I just feel like for Ruth Ware, where this is like her sixth book, she could have done better. I just, I think that that was really lame and uncool, so. Yeah. Anyway, I did get to the part where the one person is missing and the avalanche did happen, which that was a very intense scene. That's part of the synopsis, so I'm not spoiling anything. But I'm intrigued to see how they survive now because the power is out. They're all trapped in this house. Thankfully, their house did not cave in, so they all are currently surviving. But I'm intrigued to see what will happen. I kind of have an idea, but my ideas are never... Like, I always go with the most obvious thing, and I'm never right, so uh, I don't think I'll be right. But anyway, I am going to go make a cup of coffee. I'm going to just chill out a little bit this morning. It's really gloomy and dark and cold and just perfect fall atmosphere this morning. So I'm going to chill out, make some coffee, watch a little bit of the show, keep reading, and I'll check in with you guys later when I have more thoughts on the book. Hello, it is much later. It's 1030. <laughs> Sorry, I did not check in at all today. It's been kind of a weird day. I actually like had a really bad headache for most of the day, which was very annoying. I don't typically get headaches, but for whatever reason, I just had like a horrible headache. And I think it was actually almost 
a migraine a little bit because I was just like not feeling very well. So yeah, I just laid low. We went grocery shopping a little bit later and when I got home and ate something, I felt a lot better. So I think today was just kind of a weird day. I'm here with my nightly cup of tea. Tonight I'm drinking a ginger tea and I just love ginger because it usually makes me actually feel better which is why I'm drinking it and it's so good. I love ginger tea so much. Speaking of tea, I totally forgot. I meant to do this like way earlier in the vlog but look what I got. I'm so excited. I was reached out to by Sips By which is a tea subscription company they reached out to me so sweetly and asked if i wanted to be sent their monthly subscription box show you guys what is included and i was like oh my gosh yes i've actually been seeing this subscription company pop up in my feed a lot lately and i've really been considering subscribing so it was like super awesome when they reached out to me and asked me i think they start out at like only 15 dollars a month and they send you a bunch of tea i'm really excited to see what's in this box this is my first one so i don't believe that every box is the same each month which is really cool too they do a little quiz right at the beginning when you sign up and so they kind of tailor the flavors to send you so i'm really excited i'm going to show you guys what they sent me and i can't wait to see okay here we go i'm so excited oh my gosh so cute it's already so cute there's this little october tease card and it actually has oh my gosh look at how cool that is it says made for zoe and it has all of the different teas that they sent me i'm so excited Oh my word, these all sound so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, okay. This is adorable. Oh my gosh, you know what these are? They are for, they sent me loose leaf tea and these are little, you pop the loose leaf tea in here and they're little tea bags. That's so cute. I don't really need these, but they're super cute as an option. I, I probably will use these since they did send them to me. I don't want to just like throw them out. That is adorable. <laughs> the, I'm actually really excited that they sent me loose leaf too because I actually made that one of my preferences. It looks like they sent me four different kinds of tea. The first one that they sent me is from Churchill's Fine Teas and it's a French vanilla black tea, which I am very excited about. Black tea has a lot of caffeine, which is great. I have been needing all of the caffeine lately. I am really, really excited to try this. I kind of want to smell it. Should I smell it? I'm going to open it up. We're going to smell it. That smells so good. It's very vanilla heavy, which I'm excited for. I love vanilla in tea. Okay, but it says this rich and creamy vanilla tea is perfect for sipping straight up or making into a latte. That's such a good idea. A French vanilla black tea latte. That's happening. Okay. And then they also sent me, oh, what is this? It's cookie tea? I am very, very intrigued. It's like very chunky. <laughs> It says about this tea, this fruit, nut, and spice blend will bring you back to your favorite childhood bakery with its delicious aroma and taste. Indulge in a freshly baked almond cookie without the calories. Who cares about the calories? But a touch of beetroot adds a naturally beautiful and fun pink color when brewed. I love when my tea has a really cool color. Oh my gosh, I'm excited for this one. This one you have to steep for 10 minutes. That's interesting. It's a long steep, but it makes sense. That's super cool. I can't wait to try this one. I probably will try this one first thing tomorrow morning, not gonna lie. This next one, ooh, it's so aesthetic. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's green and mint tea. And I love mint tea. I'm such a fan of the straight up mint tea. It just says green tea blend. It supports weight loss, anti-aging, and soothe the stomach, which green tea and peppermint, that's exactly what I usually drink it for is to help like my stomach like digest meals and just like feel good overall that looks awesome okay and then this last one is definitely piquing my interest it says dream go to sleep deep sleep with chamomile valerian root and lemon balm <gasps> that sounds so good too I love obviously 
a good nightly cup of tea. It's like my favorite way to wind down after a long day, after any day, honestly. This sounds so good. Let's smell this one too. There's chamomile in this one, which chamomile is like one of my favorites. It's just really soothing. Oh, that, that smells like, it smells like this like really bougie department store. <laughs> If you were like walking downtown and there was this like cool store that had all of these cool like aesthetic things and like cool clothes, that's what this smells like. <laughs> so there's all my teas, guys. That's so exciting. I will leave a link to Sips by down in the, the description below. This video isn't like sponsored by them. They just asked if I, they could send me a box. So like full disclosure, I'm not getting sponsored by them or anything like that. They're just sending me the boxes and I thought it would be really fun to show you guys in case you want to do your own subscription box if you enjoy tea and like exploring different teas or if you just like a certain kind and you want to get different brands sent to you. The quiz that you take at the beginning will help them know what to send you and yeah, I just really like it. I love a good subscription box, that's so fun. Okay, so I did finish this guy, like I said, and I have to say, overall, I'm fairly underwhelmed and a little disappointed. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but my mind is like not blown. Like my time reading this story was not like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? I don't know if it was just because of the characters or the actual like plot and the the twist it didn't really feel like a twist to me. Like it just was a little obvious. I'm not someone who typically actually like comes up with, oh, this is what's gonna happen at the end of the book. Like I don't really like to guess what happens at the end. And I also am not very good at guessing, but this one I felt like, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and I also am not someone who feels like it has to be a huge surprise in order to be a good book. Like that doesn't hinder my enjoyment at all but I just think overall like I was like underwhelmed I don't know how else to say it, it the writing was still really good it's Ruth Ware she writes really well and the, the pacing was fine there were maybe some like more slow and drawn out parts I did feel like the ending was a little bit like drawn out and I think by the end I was just like okay I'm ready for this to be done like I'm just it's fine, it can be done now. <laughs> I did really like the multiple perspectives. I was really invested in Erin, the woman I talked about earlier, the like chalet stress, <laughs> the, the chalet lady. I don't, I need to like figure out the actual title. But I liked her story, I liked her relationship with the chef. They were like besties. I don't know if I'm like mixing my own feelings in with this book because there are some parts that weirdly hit close to home for me, especially when it came to talking about like a startup company and being a part of that culture. I will say that there are some really real feels. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of tiptoe around what I really want to say, but basically the way that one of the characters was treated in this book by the people at this startup company that she worked for felt um, very real. I mean, you guys know that I changed my job recently and I've worked for a startup for the last four years and then recently got a new job at a new startup. And I really struggle to not fall into imposter syndrome. I think a lot of people feel that way in their jobs and in the positions that they're in, but for a long time, specifically at my older company, just because I'm so new to this new one, it's only, I just finished my second week. I just, the imposter syndrome was so real all the time. And I always felt so insecure, felt like I never understood the politics or the the game of being a part of this company and I think that can happen at maybe any place that you're working but it was really hard and 
I feel like I have found my footing now. I think definitely a big part of it was me and just being insecure and not feeling like I belonged. But I also think that you can definitely find yourself in really difficult work situations where you're really miserable at your job and you're really miserable at the company that you're at. But because you've been there for so long and you just feel comfortable and scared to go anywhere else, you just stick it out. But I just want to encourage you if you're there, like I, I get it. And it, life is too short to not feel valued and happy where you're at with your company and with your job. And don't be afraid to look for other things. Don't be afraid to start something new, as uncomfortable as it is. Yeah, I just think that ultimately life is too short to be really miserable with where you're at with a, with a job. And I just couldn't help but think about some of those things when I was reading this book. Like it just <laughs> hit a little too close to home, which I was not anticipating because it's like a mystery thriller and it's pretty out there, but yeah. It was good. It was definitely better than In a Dark Dark Wood. It was not as good as The Turn of the Key. And it was also better than The Woman in Cabin 10. So I guess so far actually out of the four books that I've read by Ruth Ware, it's my second favorite technically. I haven't read The Lion Game or The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I do need to read those. So maybe I should read those and then line them all up from my favorite to least favorite but this one was just kind of meh for me like it it was it was fine I just don't really my mind wasn't like blown and I just think it's a little bit forgettable I think especially just compared to Turn of the Key because Turn of the Key was so good I felt like and just really creative and different just felt different this one just kind of I think will kind of get lost in the shuffle of my all of the books that I have in my brain when it comes to mystery thrillers. So anyway, I think overall with that said, I probably would give it like a three star. I will say that I'm not trying to discourage you from reading this. You should read it if you like Ruth Ware, if you like mystery thrillers, if you think you'll like this book, like the synopsis sounds good, absolutely read it. You won't be wasting your time. It was a fine book. It just, I think I just wanted it to be better. I probably had a little bit higher expectations after her last one. Okay, well, I am super tired. It's now way late. I, I've been filming this clip for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my word. I need to go to bed, work tomorrow, and I think I have to take my first call tomorrow. I'm so nervous. <sighs> I'm so nervous. I know I can do it. It's hard learning new things, you guys. <laughs> it's so hard. Anyway, I'm going to go to bed to be rested in the morning, ready for my work week. And I hope you guys are doing well wherever you're at. I love you so much. If there is anything that I can pray for you for, please comment down below. You can DM me on Instagram. I am always praying for you guys, but if there's something specific that I can be praying for, please let me know. I would love to do that. I love you. I already said that, but I'm going to say it again. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. Bye.